Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Pretty much just going to go out today, see what new stuff came out, see if there's anything different, anything like that. Don't really have anything I'm planning to get. Didn't really even look at what the main stuff is. I know there was a couple different things coming out today though. Also at the end of this video I'm going to have some reviews of some um, new DVDs and Blu-rays. We'll still also have my uh, new Blu-ray DVD update up this Saturday as well. But anyway though guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Yeah, today seems to be a really slow week here at Target. I don't see anything new at all. All this stuff was last week, like Longest Ride was last week, uh, Paul Blart was last week, Second Best Margarita Hotel was last week, like all these were last week. Like uh, it follows, so I'm not seeing anything new here at all today. We'll see if there's anything different at Walmart and stuff, but as I remember, I think this was a pretty small week from when I was looking online. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, like with the main thing where the new releases are, and there's like nothing here again, like something like Wild Horses and Kung Fu Killer, which they don't even seem to have in the spot. But all this other stuff was last week. So I'm guessing that there was like no big releases this week, at least. I mean, like I was saying before, like I don't think there was much of anything. I know Virtuosity was a couple weeks ago. This might have been today, Forbidden Empire. I don't know though. I'm. Like I said, I'm not seeing very much today at all. Like over here is sometimes where they put some of the lesser known new releases. But even over here, there doesn't seem to be anything today. This seems to be like one of the smallest release days that I can think of in a really long time. Because like I am absolutely seeing like nothing new here. Into the hometown buffet, I go. Yeah, so I just got sort of like the plain stuff here that I normally get. Don't usually eat a lot of the meat stuff here because a lot of that stuff is fried. Green beanie. Carroty. Sally. Well, just left the buffet and probably since there's not too many things in the stores today, I'm still going to go to Best Buy. Probably got to go to like this, this antique store around here. Might walk around there a little bit and see if there's anything interesting in there. Sometimes they have some weird movies and some kind of cool weird toys and stuff that I can show in there. But release wise today seems to be one of the smallest weeks I can think of in a long time. Most of the stuff is kind of stuff you have to get online and stuff like, like but in store releases is not too much at all today. Into the antique store we go. And there's no AC in this place, so it's probably like a thousand degrees in here. They got a million, you know, fans on and stuff up there. But I always remember coming in here that it's always boiling hot. But sometimes they have some kind of interesting stuff in here. I usually just like look around in here. And I have seen some, you know, weird movies and stuff in here for sale. They have like weird old Coke clocks and all kinds of different things in here. It's actually a pretty decent antique store. But you know, it's a whole bunch of different like dealers and stuff with all different like individual things and stuff like that in here. But you know, here's a little look around in here though. I don't know if I ever came in here on video or not before. I might have like a really long time ago, but I think it's been maybe a year or two since I've been in here and you know, a full body shot in there. There's a bunch of old books and stuff in here. There's some movies down here. See, as I said, I remember seeing some stuff sporadically in here. I think this used to have some value a long time ago. It's, you know, Little Britain Live. And sometimes these random MGM ones, the older ones, have value as well. Freaky picture here. This is kind of a creepy picture right here. I always love these kind of weird, creepy artwork and stuff to it in here. You sometimes you find that kind of stuff in here. And this room in here, for some reason, this tool room has air conditioning. There's a sign that says this room has AC. This place has all these freaky old tools and weird like you know wrenches and screwdrivers and this seems a little bit like to me I always come in here and it reminds me of like Ed Gein's room or something or something out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it's all kinds of really peculiar old tools and wrenches and like all kinds of stuff you can see in here weird saws and stuff this is always the creepiest weirdest room in here that's all it is is these kind of weird odd things and this area has a whole bunch of Star Wars toys and stuff here it seems to be all newer ones but I know some of these ones are kind of valuable, but most of the ones that are most valuable are really, really old ones, but 
They have a pretty decent amount of them in here, though. Some old, you know, mugs and stuff like that. I think, the, yeah, these ones are from 89. So these are not bad. These are kind of older ones. But like I said, they actually have a pretty good amount of different ones in here. Into Best Buy we go. Yeah, so over here now is where they put the new releases. See if they put anything new out at all in here today. But it seems, like I said, even here as well, seems to all be last week's releases. Because like I said, today was just a really small release for stuff they had carried in stores. Yeah, like, it's a shame. There's just some weeks when it's just like, you're not going to find much. This one, might this might have been today, but I don't think so. This elimination game... I don't think so. I think, I think there was, I think this is what came out today. Yeah, this is one of the things I know, Wild Horses, I got James Franco movie. I know that was actually today. I know this was today, Kung Fu Killer. And this one that I talked about in the last update, really like this one a lot. It's a really fun, uh, like kind of spoof, kind of uh, documentary style film about like, you know, vampires and things like that. I thought that was a really fun movie. So that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping today. Like I said, not a big release day, but now stay tuned for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got from Warner Brothers is Robot Chicken Season 7. It's a very, very fun series. If you guys haven't seen it, it's basically like a clay animated show, all in vignettes. You know, Seth Green produces the show and acts and, you know, writes a lot of the episodes and everything on the show. But it's basically like spoofs of pop culture things like the Smurfs, you know, new movies, new TV shows, like all kinds of different things. It's just like vignette spoofs are about a minute, 30 seconds long. And there's some really pretty funny ones on here, like some stuff with the Smurfs and then one thing on here with like a spoof of Cinderella about you know the you know the the fairy goblin who puts the spell on her instead of actually what she actually does is like this crazy stuff that goes on in it it's actually just a really really fun show i've been a fan of this show for years but i believe this season though is only on dvd some of the past ones have been on blu-ray other ones have not but it looks fine on dvd though but it has on here though uh commentary tracks and um you know cut sketches as well but it's a really really fun you know vignette thing uh series uh, the next one from Anchor Bay is um, a movie starring Sean Bean, and Tom Arnold was actually pretty funny in this. Well, he's not supposed to be funny, but he was like, the, his character, the movie's not really funny, but his character was funny, the stuff he did. Like, his stuff was my favorite part of this. This is about this guy who ends up getting out of jail. You know, he was a boxer, you know, pretty doing pretty well at it, but ends up killing this guy in a bar fight and ends up getting going to jail, getting out after 12 years. When he gets out, he's having all kinds of problems, getting work, doesn't really know what he's going to do. His sister doesn't really want him to stay with him, but she you know, reluctantly allows him to stay at the house and then the sister's son is kind of like becomes kind of obsessed with him because he knows about his past where he was a boxer and he's all interested in that but he ends up getting a job at this pizza place with Tom Arnold and um, you know Tom Arnold's sort of just trying to help him out and let him work there even though no one else will hire him because he's a convicted felon and it's pretty much about him trying to get his life together and kind of hoping you know trying to get a girlfriend and also you know because he gets with uh, Eva Langora's character but he doesn't want to tell her about his past and it's all about that kind of stuff it's like a kind of a christian -y drama kind of movie but it was actually pretty good like i said i don't know if tom Arnold knew that like it was going to be that kind of movie because a lot of times in the movie they're kind of editing over some of his dialogue because he you know i think he was like getting too dirty with some of it but it was actually a pretty good movie i actually like that and i'm sure brennan talked about it in his review but they actually filmed it in some of those places what he went to you know wet movie in some of his videos uh the next one from e1 is um shooting the warwicks which is the you know, theatrical uh, feature length version of the series that he did called um, uh, Reality Show, you know, and I actually had, had appearances in that show in two of the episodes. And this is the cut down theatrical version of it, which is an hour and a half long. And the, basically, the series, though, is Adam Rifkin is playing this producer character who's making, who does all these kind of reality shows. And usually they're all kind of crummy reality shows. And he ends up wanting to do something really different, that, something that really will get a lot of attention. So he comes up with this idea of doing a reality show where he puts cameras in this person, people, this person's house his family's house they don't know that they're on a reality show and kind of seeing what happens and of course nothing is really happening at the beginning he, you know it's just people going to work what they're doing you know that's about it nothing is happening so then he starts to kind of 
you know, es you know, set things up and have things planned out when he has like the dog get kidnapped or he takes the dog or he does something to get the guy, the, the husband fired or he makes it look like he was cheating on his wife and all these kind of different things. And he kind of plants things and all that stuff. And it's kind of escalates to worse and worse. And the husband becomes obsessive and doesn't understand what's going on, thinks people are out to get him. It's actually a really, really, really cool movie. And I actually like the cut down version of this movie. It really works as a film, you know, cut down, you know, Adam Rifkin is the star of this. I always love Adam Rifkin as an actor. Um, it's I actually really would recommend you guys check this out. You know, if you guys saw the series as well, it's a cool condensed version of the series. The next one is um, the House on the Hill, and this is a actually a true story about the serial killer, the San Francisco serial killer, who with this with this other guy ended up you know killing all these different people. Um, you know, he didn't really like you know, and he filmed a lot of it, and it's basically about the camera tapes getting found. It's not the real tapes, but it's basically um, one of the people who was the victims that ended up getting away is going and trying to kind of help the police try and find someone that they never ended up finding him. And since she's kind of like recollect, you know, talking about her past and what it was like when she was kidnapped and all the kind of terrible things she went through, it kind of has like a sort of uh, Henry Porter of a serial killer vibe a little bit because it's like done with kind of aged VHS kind of footage and then but it was it was it was interesting um a lot of different people were in this one like Jayla Rose and a bunch of different people you know who, from other things were in this one though this one though was a really really fun movie from Full Moon which I had never heard of before I think it had another title in the past but it's called Haunted Hollywood and it stars Eric Roberts and this is like one of my favorite Full Moon movies I've seen in years I mean like it's it's really crazy and over the top and um like sort of adult with some of the sex scenes and stuff in this one like more than I think they've ever seen them really do but it's basically like set in the 20s or in the beginning of the movie and it's about these all these different actors and the one guy is totally like a curly kind of guy from the Three Stooges like he's playing that kind of character real over the top I loved it Eric Roberts was playing like a cowboy type because they're all playing actually actors in the 20s they were having these weird kind of orgy sex parties and the one woman ends up you know finding out she lost her contract then kills all of them and then it's years later and it's these two friends that are trying to sell this house go to the house and then of course the ghosts of eric roberts and all these other stars of the, of the 20s come back and kind of go after them and have like plans for them i, I don't know i really really like this movie it's a really really fun movie um you know it has cool fun you know full moon kind of music too if you know their movies you know the kind of music it has i like this one i love it too seeing eric roberts is like the zombie eric roberts the next one I just wanted to show was the Tox Avenger Part 3, which is now on Blu-ray. This is the you know, U.S. Blu-ray from Troma, because it came out a long while back, um, like about a year or so ago from 88 Films. This is the U.S. one, uh, Tox Avenger Part 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie. has on here, too, you know, commentary tracks and a brand new intro with Lloyd Kaufman. Always love his intros. Like, that was just some of my favorite things, his features. Always remember, even back, you know, in the old DVDs, that was one of my favorite things, was just to see what the intro, you know, what he did, you know, had to say about the movies and things like that. Uh, but, you know, really good transfer in this one. If, you know, you guys know this movie. Definitely check this out if you're a fan of them. Uh, the next one from Olive Films is the Wild Thing, which is one that I had never heard of in my life. Didn't know much at all about this one. It's kind of about this kid in the beginning of the movie is with his parents and the parents end up getting killed and they they hide the key you know they're getting robbed by these drug dealers the kid gets end up like putting underneath of a blanket and then a homeless woman ends up finding this kid that ended up getting away you know from these crooks and she ends up taking him her under his wing and it's basically kind of raising him the, the beginning was my favorite stuff when she was like raising this kid but of course she ends up dying the kid ends up going out on his own into the the, the city and it's, you know, years later, and he's kind of around there. And this um, reporter woman ends up discovering him. And it's kind of about what happens and what he's doing in the city and what's going on. It has, like, that kind of Tarzan vibe in the city, um, too. You know, with Olive Films, too, really, really good transfer on this. They have some stuff coming out, too. I cannot wait for The Last American Virgin on Blu-ray. And the next one is another one I had never seen, a Linda Blair film called Roller Boogie, which is a really fun movie. And it's basically, though, about, you know, it's a movie that's it's very dated because it's like this kind of thing doesn't exist at all, like kind of rollerblading, you know, roller skating in like these rinks and stuff like that and doing these dances and things like that. But it's uh, Linda Blair's character who's like a rich girl who lives in Beverly Hills. Her parents have all these plans for her, what they want her to do. She's not interested in any of that. She's really interested in, you know, rollerblading and 
kind of learning to dance with it all. And she goes to the roller boogie cl kind of clubs and they kind of look down at her because she's rich and things like that and don't believe she belongs there. She ends up meeting this one guy that she likes and ask him and she starts to ask him, actually tries to pay him to teach her to roller boogie and to dance and all these kind of moves that he did. That's essentially what it is. Just a really, really fun, but I said very, very dated, but dated in a fun way, you know, rollerblading movie. I liked it a lot. Like, I like these kind of movies. Always been a fan of Linda Blair. And like I said, too, it's always cool to see something that I knew nothing about. And this is one that, I, like I said, I had never heard of my entire life. The next one I got from Dark Sky Releasings is The Last Survivor. It's basically one of those kind of post-apocalyptic movies about this one girl, and I think it was supposed to be like her boyfriend or her brother. Couldn't exactly figure out who the guy was, but he had like a kidney disorder and was sick. This is when like, kind of like everything is all dried up, kind of like Mad Max, and there hasn't been rain in 10 years. So where she lives, they have a well there. But then there's like, um, played by John Grease, you know, the guy who played Uncle Rico in the Pauline Dynamite. He's like, kind of like this crazy guy who's all about getting access and having all the last of the remaining water. And he's like, drilling around in the, in the ground, trying to get the water, and then killing off everybody, like putting signs up saying, oh, you can join his community of all these great people, and, you know, they have all the water you need and stuff. Basically, it's just him killing off people to take their land and try and drill there and get water from them, things like that. So it's basically about her, though, trying to kill off all those people and, like, sort of trying to hide and survive, you know, away from, from all that. That's essentially what it was. It was actually pretty good, though. Uh, nothing absolutely amazing or anything that special, but John Grease was actually pretty cool, though, as, like, the villain in this. Always been a fan of that, of him as an actor. Uh, the next one from um, MVD is Throwback, and this is the Evolution of uh, evolution of Terror is Here, and this is basically, like, a movie, like a treasure hunting movie about this guy beginning of the movie, you see these two treasure hunters that are trying to get this treasure, and then they end up getting killed by Bigfoot. And this is years later. These two other guys going out there, like, kind of doing video blogs and things like that as they're out there looking for the treasure. And, of course, they get out there looking for this treasure, and then they end up seeing something that's stalking them. Of course, it's Bigfoot that's back, you know, still out there after all these years later, still alive out there. It's also, like, people out there trying to hunt Bigfoot who believe he's out there, like these crazy guys out there in suits and stuff like that trying to get him. It was actually pretty cool, though. Um... I liked it for the most part. Um, it was a you know a movie filmed in Australia, so it had really pretty cool like settings and backgrounds and things like that to it. But I would definitely check this out if you like like Bigfoot kind of survival kind of movies. And the last one from Image is um, Appetites, and this is basically about this girl in the beginning of the movie who I'm pretty sure she was like kidnapped and then by the, taken in by this brother. And this other, the other brother who were basically these cannibals, but the one brother ended up kind of like starting to like this one and becoming friends with her and didn't want her to get killed. So he ends up killing his brother and it's years later with this girl and you know who she's calling her brother now, this big guy who's basically, they go out there and like hunt people and eat them. And that's essentially what it is. And then at the same time, there's this other guy who's like this long haired kind of like rock star type guy who's going around and like tying up women and eating them and things like that and like killing them. Well, he's not eating them, he's killing them, and he has like a fascination with killing. And then basically, she ends up meeting him, and they end up kind of liking each other. But yet at the same time, it's kind of like, is she going to kill him, or is he going to end up killing her? And that's essentially what it was, was just kind of like, what's going to end up happening? It was actually pretty cool, though. I thought I thought for the most part, this was a pretty cool movie. Um, you know, it had all shot out in the desert, too, so it had pretty cool settings and things like that. And the next one I got from Magnolia's uh, Magnet Line is The Deadlands. It's a really cool cover on this one as well. It's a pretty cool movie. It's about this guy who, you know, is in this young warrior who's in this tribe, and his whole tribe ends up getting slaughtered by this whole other group of people, whole other tribe. And it's basically about him trying to avenge and, you know, get revenge for, you know, his whole family and all this tribe getting killed off. So it's kind of him going on this mission to try and summon this demon and all these kind of things that happen along the way about him trying to, you know, go after this tribe. Basically, it was just him by himself with the help of this demon, you know, with the help of the power and things like that to kind of get revenge on the people that ended up, you know, to basically avenge the, you know, family of, you know, his tribe and what happened. It's pretty, it was pretty cool, though. Very cool visual film. Some really cool stuff. It kind of reminded me of, like, that movie, like, Apocalypse.
Calypso and a couple other kind of warrior kind of movies like this. But it has on here a bunch of different features on here. The making of, exploring the Deadlands, uh, theatrical premiere, Q&A, behind the scenes. So a whole bunch of different stuff on this. Pretty cool, like I said, visual movie. Really, really cool setting in this movie. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. And I'll see you guys later.